He's caught over 810 pound plus largemouth bass, holder of 13 worldwide pets, and inventor of the Weedless Trolling Motor Prop. Doug Hannon is the Bass Professor. Oh, why didn't you take it? <laughs> you know, one of the problems with fishing is too much knowledge. When people have too much knowledge, then they get to emphasize little details way beyond where they should be. One of those I'm talking about is the importance of the lateral line that runs down the side of bass and as it relates to how the bass feeds and as it relates to how they use their other senses in proportion. This organ consists of small holes in the scales that actually allow nerves to run toward the surface and almost touch the water. The nerves are nothing like an ear and can only perceive very low frequency vibrations. The trick with the lateral line is that it's long, almost like the antenna we see on a homing radio device. The problem is it only works to the side. This in itself suggests that it wouldn't be used as a feeding mechanism since the bass feed from the front and all the organisms involved in feeding, including the eyes and the mouth, are oriented that way. Further, if we look at these two bass on the nest, you'll see a great difference in the size of the bass. So it would follow that if the lateral line was that important, the smaller bass would be really getting short changed in terms of the use of this organ compared to the much larger female. This, among other things, makes me think the lateral line is not so much involved in feeding. And yet we know that with schooling bait fish, the lateral line is very important in allowing the fish to school as a unit. There's one time in their lives when the bass school and move as a unit, and that's when they're tiny fry. And perhaps this is when the lateral line is the most important factor in their life.